Good morning, everyone. It's God Talk with Jen Lee, and we're doing this live for the second time, so say a prayer for us. <laughs> but um, I have Josh Jasper with me today, and he is a full-time missionary to El Salvador at the ripe old age of 25. <laughs> so he has a pretty unique story. But I just wanted to have him on. He spoke the other night and talked about his heart for missions, and I really felt prompted to just have him come and share some of his story and I've known him for several years, and we met through worship team at church, um, kind of are connected. He actually sang background on two songs on my Secret Place CD, mm -hmm. and he did such a great job and just has a beautiful voice for worship. And But um, yes, got called into missions, and I just wanted to have him come and kind of share some of his story. Um, I was thinking about how important it is for us to find our purpose in this life. And how God created each of us for a special purpose and just how, you know, how challenging that can be sometimes to really hone in on that. Mm -hmm. And then um, I just thought his story is unique because not very many people, I think once, especially once they find out something that is maybe as challenging, you know, or dramatic or just mm -hmm. requires the amount of life change, sure. you know, as what missions does, um, you know, not everybody takes that step Um with such boldness yeah. and I just wanted you to share about that yeah. and maybe even just tell us a little bit about how um, you first got to know God and how he first mm -hmm. showed you who he is. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so I um, grew up at Sioux Falls First Assembly uh, and Pastor Traub has been my pastor for many years and then um, that transition with Pastor Traub and Pastor Quentin. Mm -hmm. So been there through the whole journey mm -hmm. um, and so have known kind of the Lord my whole life and have grown up on the piano bench with my grandma and, um, you know, my parents have always brought me to church and I've always been a part of that. Um, but it really wasn't until I guess like the first memory I really have of, uh, kind of giving my heart to the Lord. Um, yes, again, was when I was little, but I remember being at church camp with my dad mm -hmm. uh, and I remember being up at the altar and just crying and, um, me really kind of handing my life over to the Lord. So I know that was the, one of the moments where I really kind of handed that over to him. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course, um, with life's difficulties and challenges, even from a young age, um, just with things that were either happening in the home or outside, um, I just kind of had a lot of fear that kind of rooted in my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there was a number of years where I didn't go to church camp and a lot of things that um, didn't allow me to leave my home. Um, just some fears, mm -hmm. um, whether that came to moments with my parents um, or outside, uh, things kind of coming coming into play. Um, I had an issue with um, one of my friends and um, his dad wasn't doing well and got really upset and um, kind of started tearing through the home a little bit. And just seeing that kind of play out uh, made me fear what could happen in my own home and knowing that, and, you know, parents always tiff. Our parents kind of fight sometimes and that can just be a normal and in, in in-house um and so for me, um, thinking if my parents were to fight, that that could be the outcome of what yeah. I watched happen in my friend's home, um, really put a lot of fear. So I know I've been, now it's kind of a joke with my mom, um, more, I guess, but, um, like thinking about when I used to sleep on the floor in my parents' room out of fear oh. that something could happen. And so, um, and now, I mean, everything's great and home life is wonderful and stuff, but, um, it wasn't really until going into my freshman year of high school that I really kind of handed that fear over to the Lord. And I remember, uh, praying that prayer. I finally went to church camp for the first time and had went to a couple youth conventions. Uh, and so I had kind of my test run into staying away from home again and, mm -hmm. um, went to camp and really handed that Lord or that fear over to the Lord, um, and received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, um, that Wednesday. And I remember that next day was when we watched our video or the first time I ever watched a video about El Salvador, um, was at that church camp. Uh, and so I remember watching that and just being like, yes, I have to go. And they really amped up that next year because in El Salvador in 2008, we did like a huge event there. And so getting to be a part of that really was the start of my missions journey, um, Thankfully, I had a chance to go work um, at the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation with our youth group and mm -hmm. uh, kind of got my feet wet into ministry and stuff. But it mm -hmm. really was kind of that moment, I think, that the Lord really birthed missions and ministry in my heart. And, um, you know, of course, started my life, um, you know, in a spirit filled um, atmosphere, I guess, kind of from that sure. mo moment moving forward. So, 
So yeah, it was kind of through that process and journey, really kind of um, handing my life over to him, fighting through life's battles that you know middle school and high school and uh, can can give somebody, uh, right. but really was kind of that step of faith and just saying, you know, Lord, I'm going to believe in what uh, you have for me, and I'm going to hand this fear over to you. And of course, everyone deals with um, being afraid sometimes, but I think there's moments of being afraid and a root of fear that there's differences. And so it was really kind of uprooting that fear was what was transformational for my my walk with the Mm -hmm. Lord. So then going into college, you kind of had this, you maybe hadn't settled it in your heart, but this was kind of the direction. Yeah. But you studied music. I did. Yeah. So I, I loved going into summer are going on summer trips with our youth group and uh, taking trips and doing stuff like that. But I wanted to be a music teacher. Mm-hmm. I I knew and like talking with my old youth pastor, Jared Thompson, um, or Pastor Tyler, um, or just, you know, Dave Bauschbees or Mark Ensminger, um, kind of the youth people that were really present in my life at the time. Um, I knew I would love to do something in ministry, but my, my heart was public school education. And so mm-hmm. I was, went and studied music at South Dakota State University and was super excited to, to be a music teacher. And it wasn't really until like halfway through my freshman year of college, I remember calling my parents being like, I need to get out of here. I can't do public university. Uh, and um, looked at North Central, but just the price was something that was kind of out of my range. And really, I think that was the Lord's affirmation of me just staying at SDSU because the the ministry opportunities that I had there getting involved in the college ministries or um, being active in our our concert choir to our 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 marching band just all of those gave me such a platform um, to speak about my faith at a public university level which um, I'm very thankful that there are a lot of students in public universities and stuff that are rooted in their faith too but not um, everyone chooses to like march in it and right. make that sure that that is what they lead out of. Um, and so that was just what the Lord asked me to do. And it wasn't really until between my junior and senior year of college when I was like, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing with a music degree. I don't know why this passion for ministry is so rooted in my heart, but you got to you gotta do something. Uh, and I just remember sitting in service at Sioux Falls first and um, Pastor Quentin was talking about, you know, Jonah, like don't be a Jonah running away from your Nineveh. And El Salvador just was everywhere in my wow. head and in my heart and mm-hmm. um uh, a family from from minnesota i served them at texas roadhouse um and they're some of my supporters there brian and mindy they're wonderful in their family um they were a part of the affirmation of the calling that lord um hmm. put in my heart for min- uh, missions just serving them as a table at texas roadhouse oh, uh, I and there was stories. a yeah and there was a family at, that i gave a tour to when i was an admissions ambassador at south dakota state that mm-hmm. really just affirmed that that calling into Mm -hmm. missions and that support and God kind of really saying like, I'll take care of you as long as you be obedient to me. And so that family that I gave a tour to and that family I served at Texas Roadhouse and Pastor Quint, all of it working together was just like, all right, Lord, I get it. And I'll, I'll take Uh, that step. And so, so that's where I'm, what I'm doing now. I love that because when I was waitressing and I was, I had just graduated college and I felt so directionless. Mm -hmm. I actually had a couple that I waited tables on. I think I was on, I was at the Olive Garden Okay. and they stayed late with me that night and they, they started asking me deep questions about what I really wanted to do, like Mm -hmm. what my desire was and like, what do I love? And I'll never forget that because I felt like, even though I didn't recognize it then, I felt like like God was in that conversation and it was their prompting that caused me to go down and audition for Jesus Christ Superstar down sure. at the theater downtown, which is where I met my husband. And, um, that was a turning point in my life sure. was meeting him and starting to understand, you know, that I had things of value to offer hmm. and that, you know, I was worth something. Yeah. And so that's so funny. Yep. So Waiting tables gets you. Yeah. Yep. So it just makes you realize too, you know, don't ever um, think that just in your daily life that you can't, you know, really make yeah. a difference right. in, you know, speaking a timely word yeah. into someone's life. Yeah. You know, that you don't have to be in ministry. You don't have to be in a church. There's right. just so much that goes on that, you know, they need that word in that moment Yep. where you can just, you can change the course of yeah. your life. and. 
And it's just really about having, knowing that a pulpit isn't always on a Sunday morning at the front mm-hmm. of a church. Mm-hmm. It's really just like a, per, like you have to have your personal pulpit that you pick up and you take every day. Just being willing to share Jesus wherever you go or just, um, like you said, listening to the promptings of the Lord. And just if you mm-hmm. are walking with him or even away from him, listening to those nudges and those things um, and allowing you to be like, what if you're away from him, kind of being centered back in and realizing who that is that's calling you. Uh, and if you are walking with the Lord, what is he calling you to? Um, and being willing to use that platform just to share about him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's not as scary as it seems yeah. to be able to talk to people about God. Yeah. 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 I, I try to encourage people in that because so many people think, well, I don't know enough. Sure. You know, I don't know enough of scripture or I don't know how to say it, you know, in a way that'll, it'll come out clear and yep. powerfully. And that's like, you know, just, yeah, listen to that nudge. Yeah. And, you know, trust that he can speak through any of us. Absolutely. He can speak through a donkey. He yep. can speak through you yeah. and me. And, and I and I tell some of my friends, too, um, like, especially in the position that I have at King's Castle where I work, I talk with so many private or public school kids that are coming through, whether that means public school, high school, or a public university, or even students that are in private school that just don't know what they're doing or how to do it, you know, like... Mm-hmm. I went to school for music education and the Lord is using me here, you know, and, um, you can see the fruit of the ministry that's taken root both in you and around you and in other people. Um, and just being willing to say, okay, if, if I can go to public school and, and still figure out what I'm talking about, of course it takes learning and and process, but God can use that. Uh, Mm -hmm. and so you don't have to discount your calling or discount, um, maybe the gifts and the talents that the Lord gave you because that's why I pursued music is that was where my heart was. Um, that he's not going to use it anywhere you go, you sure. know, and be willing to say, I'm going to use the gift I gave you in a, a way that you wouldn't expect. Yes. Cause I went to yeah, El Salvador good. thinking I was going to do something in music, um, mm-hmm. with the students there and now I'm doing something completely different, but it's mm-hmm. what got me on track to go where I'm going. Sure. You know, so even if you are equipped in business and you're in the business realm and using that gifting and ability, um, the Lord is going to cur- can curve all that and you can be in your element, but doing something that he needed you to do more than yes. what you just thought you were going to be doing. Ooh, so amen. just opening up yep. to what he might have, right. even if it seems so strange or foreign at yep. first. Yeah. Um, you have a lot of those moments where you're just like, really? You know, are you sure? <laughs> I know. A just, second guess. Yep. Yeah. But and that's where sometimes those words or those confirmations, you know, can come in and be so powerful right. at a certain time where, okay, all right, all right, all yep. right. This could not be yeah. um, coincidental, right. you know, that these, all these different people come and say the same thing to me. Yep. You know? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I remember one time I went up and I got prayer after a church service and, um, one of the pastors prayed over me and I feel like God has been bringing this to my mind a little bit lately. Um, they said, God wants you to change your expectations. I don't know if I'm wording this quite right, but it was kind of like, let go of your expectations in order to align with his. Hmm. And I knew that something in the way that I was seeing my future, what I thought I wanted wasn't fully in line with what he had. Yeah. And a lot of mine has been so music focused too, Yeah, you know, so, um, you know, and I'd have people say, well, you know, yeah, try to get on the radio, try to do this, try to be a Taylor Swift, try to, yeah. you know, that was their vision of success sure. in music. Yeah. And while I still have the desire to create music and I am, you know, it's not, it's not going to always be the way that you expect it to happen. Sure. Or, yep. Yeah. And have to be yeah. willing to be okay with that. Yeah. That, that turn of yes. expectation and yeah. saying like, okay, I'll take it mm-hmm. and I'll run with it and whatever yeah. that looks like later, Lord, I'll, I'll take it for what it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And realize the power in that. Yep. Just being able to submit. Yeah. And just be that, be that clay. Yep. You know, which is and sometimes take... uncomfortable. Yep. And we were talking about that this morning. Yeah. Just, Yeah challenges that we walk through as we're trying to fully Absolutely. submit yep. to his will yeah and what that looks like but hmm. yeah well i also wanted you to share a little bit you you told us a few stories um things that have happened mm-hmm. concerning healing and yeah. miracles that have happened on the mission field and yeah. that's just something i'm very passionate about and um i had written down a scripture 
And if you want to maybe just read, yeah. or just however you want to tell that story, sure. but read us that scripture as well. Yeah. Just kind of um, tell us how that it comes out of the book of John in chapter four. Um, and I know it's just something that the Lord really has prompted me and it comes to um, really taking the Lord at his word for what mm -hmm. he's saying. And mm -hmm. so um, chapter four, um, verse uh, 47 uh, starts with, uh, when this man heard that Jesus arrived in Galilee from Judea, um, he went and he, uh, I'm gonna pull this closer, excuse me. Uh, he went to uh, him and begged him to come and heal his son who was close to death. Uh, unless the, you people see miraculous signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will never believe. The royal official said, sir, come down before my child dies. And Jesus replied, you may go, your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. While he was still on the way, his servants met him with the news that his boy was living. When he inquired as to what time his son got better, they said to him, the fever left him yesterday at the seventh hour. Then the father realized that it was the exact time at which Jesus had said to him, your son will live. So he and his uh, household believed. Um, and that was the second uh, miraculous sign that Jesus performed, having come from Judea to Gal uh, Galilee. And um, I don't know that passage of scripture is so rooted in, in my heart, uh, just because when it comes to miraculous signs and wonders, um, seeing healings take place, uh, some people can believe without that. Um, sure. and some people can, you know, believe that God is, is the healer. God is the redeemer. God is who they need him to be in that moment, um, and aligning with scripture. Uh, but one of the things that Jesus said kind of at the start of this journey is, is unless you see people, uh, unless you see these miraculous signs, you're not going to believe it. Um, but even before the man saw the healing take place, cause he was so far from his son, um, you know, it said the man took Jesus at his word and departed. Um, mm -hmm. and when he met up with those officials and they said his son was healed and when, and it was exactly when Jesus said he'll live, um, you know, the, the believing not only happened to him who said, I, I spoke with Jesus, but it, his household then became a believing household. It was rooted so deeply that this man took him for his word, yes. um, and believed that his son would be healed. And he was at the moment he said he was, mm -hmm. uh, and so the believing happened in that moment. And so for me, looking at that scripture is just so cool. Um, you know, sometimes when we have to, we pray and we're saying, you know, Lord, I'm going to believe this. I'm going to believe in your word. I'm going to take you for it. I'm just going to say it's, it is what it is mm -hmm. as you have willed it. Um, you know, we need to take it and run with it and believe it and depart and yes. and move. Uh, mm -hmm. And so for me, that has just been a really big passage of scripture that even uh, in prepping and kind of thinking about, Lord, what do you want for today mm -hmm. was kind of the recall to my spirit that he brought. Like, you know, allow, remind people to take me for my word yes. uh, and remind people to that if if i have if they have prayed for the de declaration of healing over take me at my word take it um and believe that I, that i'm that it's in process yes. um and for some people that ha looks just like this man and his son that at, at the moment jesus said it that it will be done and for some people it, it looks differently mm -hmm. uh, but god always brings completion to his his word and yes. his promise is faithful um, so yeah i think about i think it's marilyn hickey that came up with the term bulldog faith, maybe mm. not, but it was one of those people and it really impacted me because I thought no matter what, we need to just grab a hold of what he says yeah. and not let go. Right. And that's the temptation in this world is to just kind of let go. If we don't see it with our physical eyes right. by a certain day, you know, discouragement sets in yeah. and you know, give in. Yep. But what I've seen is those people that just do not, yeah. Let go. Yeah. Do not retreat. Sure. Do not take your eyes off the word. Do not stop listening to mm -hmm. it. Do not stop worshiping. Yeah. You know, that it comes to pass. Right. And it's just kind of about outlasting the enemy. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? Absolutely. Basically, I'm in this, and I don't care what you throw at me or yeah. what lies you try to tell me. Mm -hmm. I believe this healing is here. Yep. And it's here for me. Exactly. Because it's in the Holy Spirit. Yep. Yeah, and I know something that um, I, I think I've really learned throughout my walk in missions. Uh, so I work for Don and Terry Triplett, who are the founders of King's Castle Ministries. Um, and they're phenomenal. They've been, you know, working there for almost 30 years now. And this ministry has planted and grown to 29 other countries and is continuing to expand. Wow. Um, and it's just, it's it's amazing to see the fruit that's coming out of it. Um, but um, every year, every couple of years, uh, Don's brother comes down, uh, Mark Triplett. Uh, and so when he comes down, we do these miracle crusades. Uh, mm -hmm. And so even in those moments, I know talking with Mark, um, 
and, and listening to kind of his boldness. The first time I got to hear him speak was in Brazil um, of this year, uh, in January of this year. And then um, he came to El Salvador um, right in the end of beginning. Well, no, it was right at the end of February. Uh, and so listening to kind of hear him preach and he just kind of has this approach as to like, you know, we don't have to sit and beg God. You know, we don't have to do that because God doesn't work that way. Um, we need to to pray it, believe it, command whatever that ailment is, whether that um, is you're, you're feeling ill or there's a physical um, you know, sickness that's taking place or whatever, just to speak to it yes. and tell it to leave in Jesus' name. And again, take the scripture to heart and believe Jesus at his word mm -hmm. and declare it. And, and when you have that faith to move mountains and you can believe that, um, the miracles that can take place. Mm -hmm. um, and it, maybe if it doesn't happen in, in that exact moment, that doesn't mean that God doesn't hear you either. Mm -hmm. And I think that some people have that mentality too as to say like, I don't see this healing happen. So mm -hmm. kind of like you said, outlasting the enemy, are you going to mm -hmm. let the enemy win in that moment mm -hmm. and speak to you and say, so what, God's not going to heal you? Who is this you know, God mm -hmm. that you're praying to? Yeah. And I think sometimes Did we can God listen really to that. Did God really say? Yeah. You know, you think about that. Yeah. That's how he came back at Jesus yep. in the wilderness and he does the exact same thing to yep. us. Yeah, and so you can feel so hurt and so like betrayed almost when that was the enemy speaking to you the whole time. You know, it's mm. listening and saying like, no, God promised this. God promised this healing and I'm going to believe it and I'm going to move in it and I'm going to walk in that power and that authority and just going forward from there. And I know you mentioned this, I think, in church Wednesday night, but mm -hmm. um, why you've seen bigger and just wilder miracles yeah. and healings yep. overseas. Yeah. And why don't you just talk a little bit about why that sure. is? Well, I think a lot of it comes down to the, the, that the Lord moves in different ways as our minds allows kind of our, our idea to see him move allows yeah. it to, to be, I think mm -hmm. sometimes. Um, our expectations. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think then the same way the enemy can disguise himself in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think a lot of times here in the U.S., um, what I've experienced personally and, and what I see happen around me um, is that we find so many um, things a lot of times uh, maybe the enemy can disguise himself in our interest of things you know mm -hmm. I need this or this or this I need this for happiness I need this for joy I need this to fill this need and so mm -hmm. we don't always look for God in every moment because the enemy is kind of worked distracted, distracted us, us. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I see um, the Lord move in different ways internationally and healing a lot of times it's not because I need, I need this to fix this need. I need this to fix this need. I, I have rooted himself in things. Sometimes it's in ailments. It's in those sicknesses. Um, and people register that, you know, we're here sometimes, Oh, I'm sick with this or I have this going on. Well, you know, sometimes it is, it's sickness, but some, a lot of some, it can be inflicted by the enemy as well. And mm -hmm. so really taking captive of that and saying, yeah, absolutely yeah. not. And in Jesus mm -hmm. name, you know, where internationally, I think some people just have that faith to see it, the expectation of God move in that yes. way. And so when, um, someone is mute, um, and they haven't always been that way or something has happened, you know, over the course of time, um, sometimes, you know, it's, bound by the enemy and so in jesus name we command that to leave and you hear mm -hmm. the stories of um you know one of our teams was ministering to um one a, a lady and and she hadn't spoken years and um so they just prayed for her her lips to open and her voice to open and um the first word that she had spoken was jesus that she you know they were like mm -hmm. say jesus say jesus and and she just said it and declared it uh and then just started speaking um and so it's it's in those moments when you're like you know everyone it's one of you, you don't it's not fake you know yeah. you watch this lady speak her word and it wasn't her just saying jesus and everyone's like yeah that's great you know people are weeping and people are broken because they just watch this miracle of god yeah. take place and that's when people are like i believe i can see that mm -hmm. I can, you know run to it you know even just like the scriptures and stuff but i think that's why so many times that we can see things like that internationally mm -hmm. um is because it's it's a it's how they expect God to move. Yes. You know, here, you know, sometimes people are like, I'm just expecting to hear from God or mm -hmm. I'm expecting to see God move this way when we could probably be seeing, he yes. seeing healings take place so much more if we just expected God to move that way. Yes. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest things that we don't only teach people internationally, but we teach our North American teams that come down mm -hmm. is expect God to move in this way. You know, mm -hmm. so like a, one of our students... Um, that came down on a team in mid-February um, had his leg in a brace. 
uh, and he sat out the entire training day and was just like, I don't know how I'm gonna be able to minister to these kids. And you know, you start having those conversations as to like, you know, you don't have to d be dancing in front of them to talk to them about Jesus. Maybe a kid needs somebody sitting next to them just to hug them and love them to show Jesus's love and, um, and talk about that kind of stuff. And, uh, but he's like, no, I believe that I can do this, you know? And mm -hmm. so we were in the prayer fortress. Um, we have a prayer tower that um, at the end fortress, of this. Fortress, I love yeah. it. In, in, in Spanish, it works out fortress, the but fortress um, the, the prayer tower uh, will be celebrating 20 years on October 31st of 24 hours, seven days a week prayer mm. uh, and fasting. So food doesn't enter that place. Um, it's just constant prayer on the third floor. They have intercessors that are working all day. You know, they do two hour rotations and things. And so we were up there praying for the team and he's like, I just believe that God's going to heal me. And so I was like, okay, it sounds good. And so I know my buddy Harrison was with us and we had some other um, nationals from the team and, and everyone, but we just all kind of came around him and um, we said, you know, Zach, do you believe, are you going to believe that this could happen? He's like, absolutely. And I be he's like, I believe it. And so we just like, all right, so in Jesus name, you know, like let this wrap come off and let his knee be healed. Uh, and we just you know, prayed a 30 second prayer and say, you know, how are you feeling? And he's like, I don't know. And, but he's like, but I, I believe I'm healed. And I was like, okay, great. He's like, I'm gonna take my brace off. And so he, you know, put his crut crutches to the side and unwrapped his brace. And he wasn't even able to bend his knee even before that moment and bend it fully and walked around the prayer fortress. Amen. And, and all of his friends were just like, you know, <laughs> But yes, I think we need to start stretching ourselves. You know, absolutely. Yeah. And, and sometimes in that North American mindset, we don't see it happen everywhere. Where mm -hmm. sometimes, in, at least in El Salvador, and um, I did some work in Nicaragua and in Brazil, and um, two just over the last couple of years. And so seeing um, their expectation to see God move that way, I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, I just love, I love that North Americans get to come down and work with us. And they partner with the local church. So it really is a, a great way to do ministry. Mm -hmm. And so it's not just the white savior complex that us North Americans are going <laughs> to yeah. come in and deliver you of yeah. all your problems, but right. working alongside them. But I think it's so great because the nationals then rub off on the North Americans that are mm -hmm. working with us. Like, okay, okay, like let's, let's watch God move this way. And so you have this, this fire proof group of North Americans, mm -hmm. you know, coming from El Salvador back to the States. Like God healed my knee. Like I'm not on crutches anymore. And the doctor said I was going to be for this long. Mm -hmm. Like that's God, you know? Mm -hmm. And so then in their, like what happened in their school after Zach went back, right. you know, I would right, love right. to, and I know that their team's going to come back this year. So I hope to see him or see his pastor mm -hmm. just to hear, you know, what happened, who, who got to testify to, to that, mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's a little bit of the reason why we see God moving inter yes. internationally that way. Cause well, that's the expectation you know? Uh, and so that's just, yeah, mm. the journey. It's such a key. Yeah. And I know, you know, the more that we get out of our box like yep. that and just, you know, maybe go to some places that you perceive as being yeah. more hungry. If you see a hungry group of believers over here yeah. worshiping at this place, maybe go check it out. Yeah. Even if you've never, you don't know anybody from that church yeah. or, you know, just do something different. Yep. Get out of your box and experience something different. Absolutely. Don't think that, you know, it always has to be the same. Yeah. Or, you know, don't be fearful that I think one of the big um, lies that the enemy tries to scare us with is he tries to say, well, that might not be God. Yeah. You know, well, I don't see Satan running around healing people very often. Yep. <laughs> Delivering no, them absolutely. That's not his. Yeah. Niche, so. Yep. And yeah. his, it's contagious, mm -hmm. right? And so mm -hmm. when you see God move that way. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden you and yourself are kind of yes. like, I tell my interns, like we kind of like kind of hit our belly sometimes or hit my stomach mm -hmm. and I'm like, let's go. Like, this is how we want to see God move. Mm -hmm. And so when you see it once and you're like, okay, now who's next? Yep. Who's next? What's next? you mm -hmm. know? And, uh, that's how we need to be continuing to seek that and, yes. and, and watch that happen. And I know I've walked through seasons where I pray for healing and I don't see healing happen in that moment. Mm -hmm. And I had to really battle that out with the Lord. And mm -hmm. I remember the Lord really just telling me like, Josh, it's not about you. Like it's, you're not the one healing anybody, you know? Right. And you need to like, remember, like, he's like, I, I, I'm taking care of this. And so mm -hmm. you spoke it and you prayed for it and you and worked in agreement to my, my word and in my spirit. And so let me take care of the rest, Yes. you know? Cause I think that then sometimes the people that pray for healing then yeah. walk away discouraged Yeah. when really sometimes it's testing our faith and mm -hmm. some testing that. Like, I'm going to step out in faith that we're going to stand yeah. afterwards. Yep. Yeah. And really pray for that. Or sometimes even when it comes to a prophetic word, like, um, being willing to say like, I, I'm, I could be wrong, but I'm going to, mm -hmm. I'm going to talk to this person yes. and say like, um, I feel like the Lord's prompting me this. So I, I hope that you are also walking with the Lord enough to like, as we, as I tell you this, that it maybe will sit in agreement with your spirit. And if it doesn't, then like, I'm going to continue to 
try to hear from the Lord Mm -hmm. in working through those because then when you see that moment where that person's just crying you know and like that's what what I needed to hear from the Lord and you're like okay then I'm willing to discern when the Lord is is prompting me to do that Mm -hmm. and so then as you feel that I call it a spirit flop um Mm -hmm. when you feel that and you see somebody that's sick then I'm gonna pray for that person and Mm -hmm. and I'm gonna go and, and move so it turns out like people during um a ministry time at the front of a church mm-hmm. is one thing and having faith to do that versus being in Lewis or being in Walmart. Right. It's and totally then you're thing. like, okay, oh. I was in my training center, which is the church. And I'm going to live church outside the wall. I'm going to yes. live kingdom come right now. Yes. And I'm going to do this, you mm-hmm. know? And so, and you notice after you try, <laughs> yep. you know, the great thing is I've never had anybody get angry at me. And I think that's right. the fear is just like, they're going to go, you're crazy. I'll slap you yep. in the face. Uh-huh. Yeah. But generally people are pretty polite. And I think most people are just blessed that you care. Right. It just, it kind of blesses their socks off that yep. a total stranger would give a rip. Yep. Frankly. Yeah. You know, because so many people were just walking around staring yeah. at our phones and we're self-absorbed and yeah. when somebody comes up and just a total stranger and just says hey I just feel I this. feel like I'm supposed to pray for you right mm-hmm. now is there something you need it's disarming yep so and that's absolutely Holy spirit yeah that's how Jesus was and, and it just is, is yeah I've never had anyone even people that are like I mean I remember going to youth convention um or like youth conference where like the all the youth kids go for a couple of days mm-hmm. um and like we did an outreach and we all, a bunch of us were outside the mall just asking people as they walked into the mall if they needed prayer for anything. So I'm thankful for a youth group and a youth um, system that teaches people at a young age to really be bold. Yes. Um, but even if it wasn't for that, just being willing to, like you said, it's disarming. Like mm-hmm. being on the opposite end of that when someone comes up, I mean, how do you get angry if someone's just wanting to pray right. with you, you know? And <laughs> I mean, I'm thankful that I'm a believer and so I'll receive all the prayer that yeah. anyone wants to offer. But even somebody I know like outside of the faith, when you want to pray for it, like, how do you say no? And I, I have right. never had somebody, and I've prayed for a lot of non-believers mm-hmm. before, internationally, and not here in the States or in South mm-hmm. Dakota, when they're like, oh, I'm not a really believer, but have at Usually it. Usually they're know? just like, hey, okay. let's try it. Yeah. And then they hear something from God, and then they yep. go, oh, mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> <Yep>. so, <laughs> Maybe there's something out there after all. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Someone. Yep. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Okay, this is what I'm kind of thinking. I'm going to get rid of this little message here. Why don't we see, let's just pray, just whatever comes to mind, if there's, um, I don't know, if anybody has a prayer request, why don't you just put it forth right now, otherwise Josh and I can pray later as well, but um, why don't you just lead us and just kind of pray for whoever's watching, whatever is on your heart. Absolutely, yeah, let's pray. (laughs) Lord, we just thank you, God, for what you are doing and what you've spoken and uh, what you've placed on the hearts of the listeners or on us, God, that we would just be faithful to your word, Lord, that we would hear you uh, and would take you for it, Lord Jesus, whether that's an audible voice that we hear, a prompting of your spirit, Lord God, our um, our spirits agreeing with a lyric that's spoken to us in a song um, or your word, Lord, your, uh, your written text and your uh, your Bible, Lord, I pray, uh, that we would just be be willing to take you for your word and go. Uh, and yes. so when it comes to these moments of listening to your spirit and healing, uh, Lord God, and watching signs and wonders take place, God, let us um, yearn, Lord God, to see that happen. Uh, let us hunger for those moments, Lord Jesus, to see your power move. And um, it doesn't have to only happen in El Salvador. It doesn't only happen, uh, have to happen in, in Europe or in Asia or in Africa mm-hmm. or, or different places around the world, Lord God. It doesn't happen to, just in El Salvador. God, it happens where you are, where your yes. kingdom comes, Lord Jesus. And so let that be all over this earth. God, I pray for um, a burden to rise up and the people that are, are watching this video, Lord Jesus, but around the world, Lord God, of, of seeing your work take place. God, that through those miracles, through those signs and wonders, that more people would come to see you. And so, God, I pray for a boldness amongst all people, Lord Jesus, that we would step out of our comfort zones and lay hands on those that are sick. Um, and lay hands on the blind or the mute, Lord God. Um, let us be bold enough to lay our hands on the dead and see people rise up, Lord Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so let us, let's move with that faith. Uh, God, let us thank, uh, just praise you and thank you uh, for who we are and who we're, as we're made uh, 
as your creations, mm -hmm. Lord Jesus. God, I pray that you would align in our hearts, God, just a, a burden to see the lost come to know you. Let that be the greatest salvation uh, yes. and miracle that uh, we could see, Lord. Just people say, I don't know who this Jesus is, but I want to come to know you. Uh, and if that's uh, someone that's listening right now, Lord, I pray that they would just reach out to us. And so I pray, God, um, over any lost person in this community, in this re uh, region, in the world, Lord God, that they would continue to see um, your glory, uh, that they Thank would you, see um, the lost, uh, the broken, the hungry, um, be satisfied and come to know you, Lord Jesus. God, I thank you for your miraculous powers. God, I know that um, it doesn't always have to be the laying of hands uh, and it doesn't always have to be in person. So I pray for anybody that may be sick yes. um, that's watching this. God, I pray that they would just place their hand on whatever that's sick and in Jesus' name that they would receive healing. Um, so we just speak thank boldness. You, we, we pray against any sickness. Uh, we pray against any uh, demonic uh, oppression over anyone or anything. In Jesus' name, you are gone. You have no power yes. here. And so we speak to it in your powerful, powerful, powerful name, Jesus. Um, any sickness would be gone in Jesus' name. And we can't wait to hear the testimony that comes Thank from you. those that are listening right now, Jesus, of the healing and miraculous moments that are taking place as we speak it into existence right now. And so we thank you, Lord, uh, and in your powerful name, God, be with us, march alongside us, um, be the light to our feet, Lord Jesus, and the, the eyes to our heart, Lord Jesus, as we continue to follow you, Lord Jesus, God, with our, our minds and our spirits in alignment with your kingdom, mm -hmm. God, I pray that we would just move, and we thank you, Father, for what you're doing in your powerful, powerful name, we pray. And Amen. I just want to speak Lord. against depression right now, mm -hmm. I just command that spirit of depression right now to be broken and go mm -hmm. in Jesus name. And I just declare freedom over you, um, that you've, you've been thinking, you know, maybe I have this, maybe I have depression. Don't let it have you. Let Jesus have you. And we just speak that freedom over you in Jesus name. It's okay to have a sad day. It's okay to go through a sad time, but don't let that be your identity mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. All right, guys. Kristen says, yeah, interns 2017 hot. <laughs> yeah, interns, my intern babies. <laughs> That's funny. Yes. Uh, well, Josh, I just want to thank you yeah. for coming. Thank you for and having me be a part. I'll, I'll let you know uh, what prayer requests we get yeah, in and please. we can pray about those. And Absolutely. Just thank you for sharing yeah. and just being so transparent. And we love your heart. And every time you share, I just feel like holy spirits all over the place awesome just bless you and you guys too you have an awesome day and um the sun is shining so go outside yes. all right <laughs> finally it's not dark